Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Welcome back to my kitchen. We are gonna sit down and just have a conversation over a cup of tea today. We have a Q&A and a pregnancy update we're gonna do today. This is something I don't talk a lot about in my videos because my channel mostly focuses around cooking from scratch, sourcing local ingredients, and just enjoying being in the kitchen and being in the garden and having a really cozy, comforting home. We do some organizing and cooking and cleaning together. And my channel doesn't really focus on, around pregnancy. And I don't mind sharing about it. I'm, I'm gonna be really open and honest and vulnerable in this video with you today. And I just thought that I would do a separate video because I know this can be a very sensitive subject for a lot of people. And so if, if someone is interested in watching this, they are, you are more than welcome to. But if someone doesn't really wanna watch it for personal reasons, then they can go ahead and skip over this video. So I asked for questions on my community tab and you all were so awesome and supportive. I wanna say thank you to everyone who not only asked a question, but you were so supportive and just said, share whatever you're comfortable sharing. And we're just gonna be happy with that. And I just wanna say, I will share what I'm comfortable sharing. And I just wanna thank you for being so supportive when it comes to this. I do plan to be open and honest. I think that sometimes in our culture, we put a lot of pressure on women that pregnancy needs to look a certain way. You need to feel a certain way when it comes to it. And that's one reason why I haven't talked about it a lot because it's been a little bit hard and challenging for me. And I, I just worry that because it's not always rainbows and butterflies around here when it comes to my pregnancy that I, I feel vulnerable and nervous sharing about it. But I think it's good that we're open and honest and we share different perspectives so that we don't feel alone because it can be really easy to feel alone and isolating sometimes when you kind of don't feel like you see what you're experiencing being portrayed out there. So I hope you uh, enjoy this and you're gracious with my um, answers. <laughs> so we're going to sit down and just have a chat, but then we're gonna do some fun kitchen stuff. I've got some eggs that need to be washed and then last time we were in the kitchen, we made some chicken soup together and I made biscuits and they turned out beautifully, but my file got corrupted so I couldn't show you the process of how I made them and we are out of biscuits. So I thought at the end of today's video, we will make biscuits and I will leave timestamps down below if you're interested in, there was a fly, just checking out those biscuits. Now I did kind of separate these questions into categories and I will put timestamps down in the description box for these as well. The first one kind of relates to how I'm feeling during this pregnancy. If you are new, this is my first pregnancy. And so the, the questions kind of are about just how I've felt overall so far during this pregnancy. The second category is gonna be birth plan and postpartum plan. So we're gonna talk about all those fun things that I have planned. And then we're gonna talk about baby shower and baby room ideas and what I have planned for that or what I don't have planned for that. And then we're gonna talk about YouTube and filming with baby. So if you're interested in just checking out specific parts of this video, the timestamps will be linked down below. Probably the number one question I got asked was, how far along am I and what is the due date? Well, as of today, I am 33 weeks and three days pregnant. What I think my due date is should be a week earlier than what my doctor thinks, but that's okay. Babies come when babies come, so it'll probably be the first week-ish of December and we will see when baby decides to arrive. The second most common question is from Elizabeth and do we know the gender? Will you do a gender reveal and have you told your family yet what the gender is? And yes, we know the gender. We did an early blood test to find that out because we were very impatient and we wanted to know. And we did tell our family and friends, they know we didn't do anything big or elaborate <laughs> to tell them, we just told them, actually Josh on accident, I don't know how on accident it was, I think he was too excited to share. He made it slip on a group text, so with the family. So that's how the family found out. Our original plan on how to tell the family was we were gonna tell the family the gender, 
and that we were pregnant all at the same time because we were supposed to know the gender before we announced that we were even pregnant but the lab work didn't come back in time and we what we wanted to do was we were going to have a gender reveal cake it would be like a chocolate cake or something with the color in it and then we would share that for dessert for a family dinner we had everyone over and people would be like why is there you know this specific color frosting in this cake and then we were going to announce it but we weren't able to do that so it was a little anticlimactic but that's okay and we will be sharing the gender with you i'm just not sure when we haven't really talked about it so at some point you will know the gender heidi asks are there some foods that you've been craving or not craving and honestly i haven't really had any cravings or food aversions the only thing that is different than has ever been before in my life is for some reason now I like apple pie and apple crisp and I've never liked apple pie or apple crisp in my life and for some reason I'm really enjoying that <laughs> this fall and so that's something that's new and different but I have not had any serious cravings or food aversions so that's something that is unique to me I think and then Samira asks how have you been feeling between the different trimesters? How is pregnancy going so far? You seem to have a lot of energy. And so this is where I'm gonna get a little bit more um, personal, I guess, and honest uh, about my experience. And the first trimester was pretty rough. Morning sickness, or I should say all day sickness, was hard. It was a real thing and also tiredness and fatigue. I didn't know that that was a part or a symptom because I've never been one to do a bunch of research about pregnancy or anything like that. And not only mixed with the nausea, but the fatigue was pretty tough. And I was really grateful that I was able to work my work schedule around when I was having more severe symptoms and when I wasn't. And that morning sickness did kind of go all the way through about halfway through the second trimester. And then about halfway through the second trimester is when I started having some serious hip pain. If you see me wobbling sometimes, it's because my hips hurt pretty bad. And so I've been working with my doctor not only to help with the nausea, different dietary things, and then some medications, but also now I've been working with my doctor on different stretches and things I can do to help with my hips. It's because of the hormones, my hips are not stable, and so they can cause quite a bit of pain. And so one thing that I can do is I can do big kitchen projects or garden projects. I tried to do them when I was having good days versus bad days because that seems to be how it goes. Some days are good, some days are worse. And so I can try to work my schedule around when I'm having better days physically to do more bigger projects. And then if I'm having kind of a poor day physically, then I can sit and do computer work because I do have a lot of computer work I have to do. And some days, honestly, I just have to fake it till I make it. <laughs> and I try to edit out the parts where I'm, you see me really wobbling or I'll sit down, you'll see me and I might be chopping a bunch of peppers and I have to sit down because my hips can't take standing up. And currently I am in the third trimester and right now um, just kind of like body soreness is basically what I'm feeling. And then for some reason I have been having some nausea come not a ton but it's just been weird like in the afternoons i've been having some nausea not enough to get sick but just like ugh, you know feeling yucky and then my digestion has been weird i've never had digestion issues in my life and that is something that i didn't know was a symptom of pregnancy and that is real and not been a super fun side effect Norma asks if I am showing yet, and at 33 weeks pregnant, I am most definitely showing. There is quite a big bump there. I feel like in the last three weeks, it's just really come on, and it's like, whoa, okay, yes, there is a baby in there. And do I feel movement? Yes. The first time I felt movement was at 17 weeks, and it has just gotten progressively more and more and more. I actually can see the baby moving now, it's kind of crazy. My belly moves and if I have something sitting, like if I'm laying and I have my laptop on me, I, my laptop will actually move and that is kind of crazy and surreal. And Josh gets to feel baby moving all the time. And so that's kind of fun. He really, really enjoys that. Jen asks, are there things you love about being pregnant and are there things you don't like about being pregnant? And to be completely honest, pregnancy has not been my favorite thing in the entire world. It's been really rough. And 
I'm just being honest with you that it's been not super fun for me personally. So I feel like I'm getting through it. And what my favorite part about it is, is watching Josh and seeing how supportive he's been through this whole thing. He's been supportive emotionally, which I have some really rough emotional days too. For the most part, I feel really good, but then I have had days, I guess I didn't really talk about that with the different trimesters. It hasn't been one really over the other, but sometimes I just have like a really bad day and he's just been so supportive and just listening and totally validating my feelings. And it's just been really fun. That's been the best part is seeing how supportive he has been and just a really good partner through this because it's been hard sometimes. He's also been very supportive physically and just doing things around the house. And it's been so fun to watch that. Like he's completely taken over my chicken chores. I collect the eggs. But other than that, he does everything. He lets them out in the morning. He locks them up at night. It was nothing I asked him to do. He just took that over. And he helps around the house a ton. And it's just, and carrying my canning jars downstairs and upstairs because my hips hurt. And it's just been really, that's been the best part. We will have been married in February for eight years. And I am so glad that we waited to start our family until now because it was just a really good time for us to have all those years together to let to grow and just enjoy building a life together getting to know each other and then now it would have probably been harder for us to have kids if we, when we first got married because we had things we had to learn about each other and get to know about each other and grow it's just been really good bonding for josh and i and we've definitely grown closer as a couple and it's just been fun to watch him kind of be so supportive throughout this whole process. Marie asks, how many children do we want? And we are gonna get through this first one and then we will reassess at that point. We don't really have any expectations on what we want our family to look like. And so we're just gonna start with one, see how it goes, get through this. Right now it's hard and the idea of having to do this for another nine months seems daunting. And so once, I get through this whole part and the labor and delivery part and then I have my baby in my arms and I forget about all this hard stuff, then we might reassess and figure out if we want to do this again. But for now, we're just getting through today and we will reassess at that point. Owl Cabin asks if we're going to do pregnancy photos or maternity photos, I should say. and. Uh, I do not plan to do that. I have not been one. It's not really in my personality to take photos of the progression of this on a weekly, monthly, or anything basis. I'm going to be super open and honest with you that getting bigger has been harder, has been hard on me a little bit mentally. I've always struggled a little bit with body image issues, and so getting bigger is a struggle. It doesn't mean that I don't appreciate what my body is doing and that I am grateful that my body is able to do this, but having photos of me <laughs> getting bigger is not something that I, I really want to document so much. And you know, maybe I will regret that. I don't know, but that's just me being very vulnerable and very honest with you. And it's not something that I really hear people talk about. And so that is something that I don't know if it's unique to me or if that's something that our culture, we just don't talk about it because it can seem taboo because it, then if you are honest about that, then it makes it sound or feel like you're not appreciative what your body's able to do. And that's not at all. I think you can have both feelings. You can be appreciative and, and um, excited and in awe of what your body can do, but you can also struggle with the fact that you're not used to getting bigger physically taking up more space. <laughs> and so that is why I'm not gonna do maternity photos. May I regret that? I don't know. But I do have a lot of footage <laughs> where I can watch myself getting bigger. And so I do have documentation on it. It's just not gonna be in a professional photo shoot. Elizabeth Taylor asks, are you gonna have a little holiday before the baby comes, like a baby moon? And no, <laughs> and I'm so I'm so okay with that. We have done so much traveling. I have done so much traveling the last few months that I, plus between moving and having two houses 
and remodeling and now finally being here i am so excited to have no travel plans and just be here and be able to focus on the house and get the house ready and not have to focus on going anywhere right now the idea of going on a vacation sounds extremely stressful to me and like a lot of work and so we are excited josh and i overall are homebodies and so we enjoy being home and we're just looking forward to being home and getting this place ready. So that leads us into the next section where we are gonna talk about birth plan and postpartum plan. And this is also another area where, well, we'll just get into it and we'll start talking about it. <laughs> so birth plan, home or hospital, what is the plan? For me, the plan is to have this baby in the hospital. And that is because overall I have not written out an entire plan. I don't really want a plan. What my plan, this is my plan, <laughs> friends. My plan is to have a healthy baby and a healthy me in the most stress-free, traumatic-free environment as possible. <laughs> so I think the idea of a home birth sounds amazing. It sounds romantic, it sounds beautiful. But this being my first time around, I want all the options available to me when it comes to pain management. And I don't know what I'm getting myself into and I won't have those pain management options if I have this baby at home. So the plan is to have this baby in the hospital so that I have all those options available to me because I don't wanna put any pressure on myself to have a birth that looks a very specific way and that is why I'm choosing a hospital birth. But that being said, I did hire a doula, and I think she is honestly worth her weight in gold. In where I live, I don't know if it's a Pacific Northwest thing, if it's a regional thing, if it's the entire US, the way that the country does it, but when you have a doctor or a midwife at a hospital, that you see for your regular routine checkups, that is not the person that is necessarily going to deliver your baby. Unlike if I had hired a midwife to do a home birth, then that person most likely is the one. But when it comes to traditional hospital births, it's really who's ever on call. And for my hospital, this changed about, I think she's, my doctor said it was like five or six years ago. And that gives me anxiety <laughs> because I, I interviewed a few different OBGYNs before I decided to choose my OBGYN. And I chose her because our personalities fit, she's super awesome, and the fact that I would only have her be at the labor and delivery is if she is the one that is working that day is pretty, the, the chances of that happening are pretty small. So I decided to hire a doula so I could have continuity of care, someone that I have been seeing multiple times throughout this pregnancy who understands me, understands my personality, and she will be there. And so we have someone who will be there from the pregnancy, through the labor, the delivery, and she will be with me during postpartum. And her support has been invaluable. Honestly, I think that just the appointments that I've had with her, I have gotten a lot more out of than my appointments with my OB. Even though I love my OB, my doula is amazing and I'm so excited that I took a lot of your guys' advice and I went ahead and hired my doula. One of the main reasons I wanted to hire a doula is because I don't know a lot when it comes to the way the hospital system works, what is protocol, what I can advocate for myself, what I can say yes to, what I can say no to, and she is someone that is very comfortable with those different treatment options and with some, Sometimes when we you know, are in a situation, especially a stressful situation like labor and delivery, it can be hard to stand up for yourself or advocate for yourself when you have a doctor who's you know, giving you advice or recommending things. And sometimes you can just go along with the flow because you feel like they know what's best. And my doula is someone who can slow it down and if there is a recommendation, She's the one that's gonna know what more questions should we ask. She can take the time to slow it down and explain those types of things to me and I feel like I'll be able to make a more informed decision without me having to go out and researching all these options that 
for me and my personality could be very stressful. I'm not someone that wants to know necessarily all the nitty grittiness of all the different options that could happen or the possibilities that could happen that I need to know that so that if those instances arise during labor and delivery that I need to know those things so that I can make an informed decision. So I feel like having my doula there who knows those things is gonna help Josh and I guide us through making those decisions if those decisions need to be made. Another reason I am so excited that I hired a doula is because it takes the pressure off Josh on being that advocate. Like I was saying, Josh and I don't know what we're getting ourselves into and we could try to do all the research in the world to know what we can say yes to, what we can say no to, or what our options are when different things arise. But then that puts the pressure on Josh on being that advocate for me and not being the support system for me. So one of the reasons I wanted to have a doula was so that Josh can just be there and be the support and there's no pressure on him, no expectations that I have on him that he needs to be my advocate or anything like that. He can just be there and be supportive and be a good presence and my doula can take on the advocate role. You know, if we aren't on the same page with the doctors or if we don't understand what the doctors are saying or whatever it might be, I have that person there that can go to bat for us, both Josh and I, and it completely alleviates all the pressure off Josh. And so that is another reason why I am so excited to have a doula just for that. So that, and she even talks about in our meetings together that she is also a support system for him. So not only is she gonna be a support system and advocate for me, but she will also be there for him and she will be able to help guide him through on how to be the best support system for me. So that's just another reason why I am so grateful that I was able to hire a doula. And she is someone that is gonna help create an environment in the birth room that is gonna be something that is gonna be fit my personality. So part of the birth plan, I guess, is I really prefer dim lighting, I prefer soft instrumental music, bright lights and sterile environments are very stressful to me. And so she is gonna work with me and we're gonna make you know, a hospital birth room as cozy and as dark and as romantically lit with can, not candles, we can't have candles in the hospital, but we can have Christmas lights and all those things and the right music to make it a really calming and peaceful environment that's something that I am gonna be comfortable in. And then Veronica asks if I plan to breastfeed or bottle feed. And this goes back to the birth plan thing again, and this is where another reason why I am so grateful I hired a doula, because I have a lot of concerns and I guess probably fears or of the unknown of what all of that looks like, you know, breastfeeding or bottle feeding and my plan is to try to breastfeed and see how that goes and but I'm not going to put pressure on myself because I know that there are women out there that can't do that and what is right for one person is not right for another person and I was really open and I have even kind of brought up concerns with friends and family and our culture again puts a lot of pressure on women that everything needs to look a certain way and that you know, one way is best and it should be best for everybody. And people give so much advice when it comes to pregnancy and child rearing and all these things. And one thing my doula said to me that she is just so supportive. She just listens to my fears and doesn't give, you know, advice or feedback based on her own experience. She just validates the feelings and fears that I've had over both the labor and the delivery and the idea of breastfeeding or bottle feeding and all these things. And her whole thing was, you, you need to do what's best for you and for Josh because whether that comes to the way the birth looks or the feeding looks, because the most important thing is that you and Josh are both healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually. And then, you know, child rearing and parenting is hard enough that if you aren't, if you're putting so much pressure on yourself that you feel like you need to do something a very specific way because that's the way you see it portrayed or the way that society tells us it needs to look and you're not in a good physical, mental, or spiritual state because you're trying to fit into this mold that doesn't fit what's best for you, then you're not gonna be the best parent 
that you can be for that child. And that is something that I have gotten so much value out of having my doula. My friends and family have the best intentions sometimes when I talk about these different fears that I have or whatever it might be. And, you know, they're, they're giving, they probably have more, you know, knowledge on what is best, but um, just hearing someone say, it's okay to be scared, it's okay to have those fears, and just end up doing what's best for you is really, really important, I think. And that's why I'm so grateful that I have my doula, because she does that for me, and it's just been really, really good. All right, on to some lighter things. <laughs> I hope that what I'm trying to say here is coming across well, that I wanna leave space for everybody and for myself to choose what's best for each individual person and for their family. And nobody's family or choices look exactly the same. And that's a beautiful thing. And we're all just trying to do our best. I think that, again, society puts a lot of pressure on us, you know, to have things look a certain way or you know do things a specific way because that's what you know society says right now is best and things change you know there's these huge pendulum swings that we have and you know we learn and grow as society and we're you know trying to become better and better but we still as individuals need to remember that we need to do what's best for us and our family and we need to give space for other individuals to choose what's best for them so I hope that's encouraging. I hope that I feel very vulnerable kind of sharing this and where I'm coming from with this. And I just hope that it can bring encouragement to somebody else because I, I feel like I don't see that a lot where people are giving space to people to choose what they want. Like when it comes to hospital birth or home birth, I think that both options are beautiful options. And I'm so grateful that we live in a time and place where we get to choose that. We get to choose to do an unmedicated birth or we get to choose an epidural and not one is right or one is wrong for each individual person people need to decide for themselves what is right and wrong <laughs> for that situation and every birth might be different and that's why i don't like the term natural birth versus unnatural birth when it comes to you know a medicated birth or not or a c-section versus a vaginal birth because as long as mother is healthy and baby is healthy, then we get to the end point. That is what's the best. And as long as mother doesn't feel traumatized in the end, then that's what's best. And so I am open to a C-section if that's what needs to happen, if that is going to be what gets me and my baby to a healthy point at the end of all of this. And so I'm giving myself grace and not putting pressure on myself and I, and giving everybody else grace and I want everyone to not feel pressure based on society what this labor and delivery and parenting thing should look like. <laughs> I don't know. I am not someone who should be giving advice on any of these topics at all. I'm just trying to share my perspective, my little point of view that I have here and that is what I'm doing. So let's move on to some lighter things like do I have a high chair? No, <laughs> I do not have a high chair. That's funny that that is the next question. And then what are your plans for the nursery? Do you plan to get a crib or a bassinet? Right now, we don't own any baby equipment at all. I have quite a few things that you all have given me in my PO box. And then I have some things that my sister has donated to my best friend. And then now I have received, I have a swing from my sister-in-law that I'm gonna borrow. And I have a couple things that I have received from other people that I'm gonna use and either borrow it or um, they have given it to me. But Josh and I have personally purchased zero baby equipment. Now, I have kind of alluded to the fact that I am not a researcher, I don't enjoy that. Josh loves researching every nitty detail of every single product and thing that comes into this house. And so honestly, he's gonna be the one that will eventually, at some point, He's gonna purchase the car seat. He's gonna purchase probably the stroller. That is probably what he's gonna do because he'll wanna research. Um, all I told him was I want it to be light and easy to fold and unfold for the stroller. And I want the car seat to be light. And then he can buy whatever he wants. I don't really care. But when it comes to a crib or a bassinet, I haven't purchased either of these two things. But what I'm thinking is 
a little bassinet that's on wheels that I can wheel around and that's probably going to be my first purchase. We are going to get more into baby room topics in a little bit. So that's basically as much as, and I'll talk more about a crib when we get to that point. But I think for the first bit, we will probably use a bassinet. And I like the idea of it being on wheels so that I could wheel the bassinet into the laundry room or into the kitchen or by my bed or wherever it needs to be. And I have seen those online. I just haven't purchased anything. Are we gonna use disposable diapers or cloth diapers or both? I have always wanted to use cloth diapers, but in the stage of life I am right now, I am so busy. Realistically, I don't know if that is something that I can honestly fit into my life. With all the things that I need to get done, I, I am a, a working stay at home. I'm a working mom who works at home. That's what I'm going to be. And so I just don't know if I could fit cloth diapers into my life unless I hire a service. Have any of you guys used a diaper service? I like the idea of doing cloth because it's so much more environmentally friendly, but I don't know if I actually have the time to manage that myself. And I need to research if a service would even come up to where we live because we are a little bit out in the country. And I think that that would be my, my optimum option would be to hire a diaper service but I need to do a lot more research. You know what I need to do? I need to have Josh do the research on that. My friend, um, I don't have a lot of friends that have babies, but one of them, one of my friends who, um, she did like a hybrid type situation where the outside of the diaper was cloth, but then there was an insert that was disposable. So you weren't throwing away the entire diaper, but you weren't having to clean the actual mess. You could throw that part away and then you wash the outside part. I like that idea too, but we are just gonna have to see. I need to do a lot more research. And if you guys have any suggestions or if you've had good experiences or bad experiences with either, I'd greatly appreciate that. And Josh is a germaphobe. And so if we do do cloth diapers, we have in the garage an extra setup where I could purchase a really cheap washer machine, probably a stackable one. And I could get a second washer and dryer and we could do the cloth diapers in there. And that's probably what we would do if we end up doing cloth diapers, is just getting a really affordable, you know, stack washer and dryer. And so we can kind of keep our, our, you know, clothes separate from the diapers. So the next question, and I think this is a fun question, is what names are you considering? And we have two names we're considering. It's basically been the two top names that we've been considering the entire time. And we haven't told or shared the names with anybody and we won't share the name until we have it finalized and the baby is born um, because I just don't want anybody's opinion on the name. And once it's the name, they can't give the opinion, right? And what we'll probably end up doing is using those two names together and one will be the first name and one will be the middle name, but we're not 100% sure on which one will be the first name and which one will be the middle name. We kind of, we refer to baby as these names all the time and we're just, we go back and forth all the time. So we will see when baby's born what the name will be. Elizabeth asks, do you think Josh will be a hands-on dad? Do you feel ready? I think Josh is gonna be a very hands-on dad. We were talking last night and I was having kind of a moment. It was a tough moment and he's like, he just made some comment about, you know, I've been taking care of this baby for the, these, it will be nine months when baby shows up and he's just excited to then take over. He is going to be the most hands-on dad on the face of the planet. He's so looking forward to the getting in the nitty gritty. He wants to change diapers. He wants to do night feedings. He wants to do it all and he is so excited. And this, like I mentioned earlier, not only has he been so supportive for me physically, emotionally, and spiritually throughout this entire pregnancy. But I know that he is going to be so hands-on and I am not going to have to ask him <laughs> to pick up the slack. I am not gonna have to feel, I know that he is gonna be the type of person that if nursing works out for me and baby, then he's gonna be a little bit jealous that he's not able to get as much time with baby because you know baby will need me just because of the nature of how breastfeeding and the sheer amount of time you spend with mom 
in that aspect and so I have no fears that he is not going to be right in the trenches with me taking care of all the things <laughs> I just know that he's gonna be he's gonna be so good he is more looking forward to some of that nitty-gritty stuff than I am and I'm just I love to see it and it's so great Rebecca asks, now with the new home, does it make it feel easier for the nesting period to start? And it does, except we are waiting on some contractors. We finally have some things in place where the ball can start rolling again. We got really bottlenecked and the whole house projects took a huge stop because of some serious bottlenecks we were waiting on. And just recently we are able to get this ball rolling which means I am gonna be able to start getting into the more nesting phase. <laughs> I feel like I have my, my bedroom, my laundry room, and my kitchen are organized. But when we get to the nursery section, we'll be able to talk about that because that is not, there is nothing been done there yet. So that's the next big thing that we need to figure out. Samantha asks, what style do you think you will adopt when raising a baby? My style is going to be survival mode. <laughs> Whatever it takes for us to get to a good place, we are just gonna figure it out. I don't have any, just like with the birth and everything, I don't, I don't know who this child is gonna be. I don't know the personality. And my goal is to, I, I saw something yesterday on Instagram that was figure out who your child is and try to nurture that child to be the best version of themselves. And that is my goal in infancy all the way up until that child is an adult i'm going to figure out who this child is and we're going to work together to try to be the best versions we can be both as a mom and i can help nurture that baby to be as loved and cared for try to nurture them to be the best individual that they can be i really don't want to put a lot of expectations on the baby or my child to be a specific way and I think that adopting whatever parenting or style works the best for that child is what I'm going to try to do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have one specific book that I'm going to be like, this is what I'm following, these steps, ABC, um, or anything like that. But that really resonated with me yesterday when I saw that reel and it was basically just try to nurture your child to be the best version of who they are and figure out who they are and whatever even if it doesn't look like what you may have chosen for them or what they want out of life but try to nurture them i guess that's my take on that lisa johnson asks if we plan to homeschool and right now we do not plan to homeschool but we have about four or five years before we have to make a final decision on that and even at that point we could change our minds you know up until the next 18 years my goal like going back to earlier is figuring out what's best for the child josh went to school his entire life and he had a very good experience i was homeschooled and i went to school and for me going to school was a better experience than being homeschooled and so our plan is to put our child in school but just like earlier that you know if this isn't working for them for their personality for their learning style or for whatever it might be i am totally open and willing to adjust that i want to figure out what's best for my individual child not for necessarily because josh and i both had better experiences going to school than being homeschooled. I went to my parents and told them I really wanted to go to school and they listened to me and I went to school and that was the best option for me. And not that every child necessarily knows what they know is best for them, but I really want to try, like I said earlier, to figure out who my child is and try to parent that child in a way that is best for them and not having these broad spectrum um, views on you know my childhood and my perspective and projecting that onto them and so that is kind of my my thoughts on that that we don't plan to homeschool but if that is what in the ultimate end would be best for them then that is something we will do so one of the questions i got asked a ton and i love this question because clearly you guys all know that my life revolves around food i love food i love cooking food i love growing food I love all things food. And the question is, will you make your own baby's food? And we absolutely will be making our own 
baby's food. My goal when it comes to food and baby is to not have, you know, baby food necessarily or kid food in the house. We plan to just have food that we're eating and uh, I really like the way that the French do it where they just, inter it's very similar to baby with weaning where you just feed them whatever you're eating. You know, if you make a dinner, there's gonna be enough out of that dinner that you can kind of mash it up or slice it up or dice it up small enough that baby can enjoy and eat and really trying to even develop the palate of a little of a baby from early on instead of having it be all rice cereals and things um, trying to just introduce all the foods well you know that you're supposed to at the proper age but just introducing different flavors and textures and things like that. So I obviously have a lot I need to learn. I don't know when you're supposed to start even feeding kids solid foods, I have no idea. But I do know that I plan to just cook like I do now and I hope that our our child enjoys food just as much as Josh and I enjoy food. So I really do not want to have kid food and adult food in the house. I want all of us to be sitting down and enjoying food together. All right, so let's talk about something fun. <laughs> let's talk about baby rooms and baby showers. So Donna asks, have we started working on the baby's room and do we have a theme for the baby's room? We have not started working on the baby's room at all. Not even a little bit, not even one little iota yet. And that's because we were waiting on these doors. If you guys have been here for any length of time, we ordered doors and they our bonus area, we've got a couple bedrooms and a bonus room and all that whole area is getting new doors. We needed the doors before we could put the trim in. We needed the trim in before we could paint and we needed it painted before we can put flooring in. And that is where Josh's office is going to be. And it's completely unfinished right now. It's plywood, there's tack strips on the floor. It's nowhere that anyone wants to be right now and we finally got the doors the doors are going to be installed next week which means then we can install the trim which means we can paint and then we can put the flooring in that bonus area so right now josh's office is where the baby's room is going to be and he doesn't really have anywhere else to put his office so i am not stressed about it because if baby comes and we still don't have a nursery I'm not really that worried about it because we will have the bassinet set up <laughs> and I've talked to a lot of seasoned mamas out there and a lot of them say you don't need all the things. You need a place for them to sleep, you need clothes, diapers, a way to feed them, a car seat, a stroller, and um, a wrap. And I'm very much of a minimalist type person. So if I have all those things, I know that I will be okay if I don't have a nursery set up. But I think that we will have that bonus area set up and Josh can move his office and we can have a nursery set up in time for baby to come. But in the event that that doesn't happen, as long as I have those five items on hand and I think I'll be set, I think I'll be okay. I don't need to stress about it. And so the theme eventually when we do set up baby's room will be just all neutrals. Uh, I don't really have a plan to have a character theme or anything like that. It'll just be really simple, neutrals, nothing super fancy, because I'm not super fancy. Courtney Nicole asks, how excited are the families for this baby? And what are you most nervous and excited about when it comes to baby? So both sides of our family are super excited. This is, my parents thought that they were done having grandkids because I'm the youngest and Josh and I have been married for eight years. My siblings are all done having kids and they thought that they weren't gonna get any more <laughs> grandbabies. So they're excited that they are getting this grandbaby because it might be their last one. <laughs> I don't know, we will see what the future holds. And then on Josh's side of the family, one of my sister-in-law had a baby not that long ago. My other sister-in-law is pregnant. I'm pregnant, we're due about a month apart from each other. And so this is the first round of grandbabies on Josh's side of the family. He is the oldest on his side of the family and I am the youngest on my side of the family. And so it's kind of fun that on his side of the family, all of these cousins are gonna be so close in age and they are all going to, that we all live very close to each other and I'm really excited to watch these cousins grow up together because I didn't grow up with cousins around me that were anywhere near my age. And I didn't grow up with grandparents 
at all. And so both my parents and Josh's parents are so close. It's gonna be so fun to have grandparents and cousins and all the fun things so close. So we are so excited about that because that's something that I didn't grow up with and I'm excited that our kid is gonna have cousins spend the night all the time and be able to go to grandparents and it's just gonna be so fun. It's gonna be so fun. What am I most nervous about and what am I the most excited about? Probably, I'm. to be honest, I'm most nervous about labor and delivery. That does scare me quite a bit. I don't know if scared is probably the right word. I probably shouldn't use that word. I should probably say just the unknown of that, it, it makes me nervous. And so that is why, again, I'm so excited I have a doula because I feel like I will have that continuity, that person for me. And then I know Josh will be a, a really good support there. Taylor asks, do you have an Amazon wish list? And I don't have an Amazon wish list and I will not um, sign up for an Amazon wish list because just the fact that you all show up and watch my videos is more than I could ask for. I am blessed. Every comment, every thumbs up, every view blows me away. And I don't take that for granted. And I couldn't ask for anything more from you than that. It, it's you all have no idea how much you bless me and Josh by just showing up and being here and you all have already blessed me so much with baby things that that's one of the other reasons why I haven't had to I don't I haven't felt the need to run out and go buy a bunch of stuff because I am already so blessed by you all and you know Josh and I can take care of any of the things that we need for this baby so I just want to say thank you for showing up and being here and the fact that you would ask for an Amazon wish list is mind blowing to me, but no, we're not gonna sign up for an Amazon wish list. Taylor also asks, am I going to have a baby shower? And we are not going to do a baby shower. This might surprise you because I do have a YouTube channel, but I really don't like being the center of attention. And opening gifts in front of people is something that I really, I, I really don't enjoy that. And so what I think what we're gonna do because uh, my mom and sisters really want to sh do something is after baby comes I think they're called like a sip and sprinkle or something like that And it's where you kind of have a little party or get together after baby comes and then the attention can be off me and the attention can be on baby and Then we don't need to worry about Gifts or everything because at that point we will have everything we need and we can just kind of enjoy some family time after baby comes and just hang out with friends and family at that point. So I think that's what we're going to do. It might seem weird that I'm uncomfortable with all that attention because I have a YouTube channel, but the YouTube channel is just me and you talking. <laughs> I'm not sitting in a room with 25 or 30 people watching me open presents or having all the attention on me versus, you know, right now it's just you and me in my kitchen and we're just hanging out together. And so that is why I um, am not choosing to have a baby shower. And Josh and I can take care of any of the, you know, baby needs. If we need to buy anything, we can take care of that. So, but you know, I understand that we want to celebrate this baby and the baby coming. And so I think for us, I'm excited that we've chosen to do a party and hang out once baby comes and that will be fun. And you know, that it'll be food related and my mom and I will do a bunch of fun cooking together and I'll probably feel more up to cooking and just enjoying that time. And then Sarah asks, I love this question, what is your favorite baby item? I have no idea because I haven't really purchased anything yet. So ask me in maybe a year and we will <laughs> revisit all the things, the necessary and unnecessary things that you know we are sold as first time parents that we need all these things. And we'll figure out what the best ones were and what the, the gimmicks were. Those were the baby shower and baby room questions. Now we're gonna go on to the YouTube and filming and baby questions. Ember asks, do you still plan to film after the little one is born? Will the baby be on YouTube? And I do plan to film after the baby is born. This is my full-time job. This is what I do for a living. And so I do plan to film, but baby probably is not going to be on YouTube. You will probably see me hold baby, we will introduce baby, but just like my channel is now, this channel revolves around food and gardening and sourcing local produce and cooking from scratch and finding joy and inspiration in the kitchen and in our homes, organizing, cleaning and all those things. That is mainly what my, you know, the videos will revolve around. 
and not so much baby because baby has not consented to being on YouTube. I'm really big on that. Anytime I show anybody on my YouTube channel, I have their permission to show them. That's why you don't see Josh all the time because he doesn't always want to be filmed. And you see some of my family members and you don't see other family members because this whole thing is my thing. It's not, you know, anybody else's thing. And I want to respect people's autonomy. And once someone is out there, they're out there and I, it's really hard to take that back. So until baby is old enough to decide that they want to be on YouTube, I think I'm just gonna make the decision that they're not and then they can decide down the road if they want to be um, versus the other way around. This goes into Joy's question. Joy asks, did I film any of the reactions of when we announced the pregnancy to friends and family? And I did not film that because we did a big party here at our house and I had all of our friends and family here basically at the same time. And I already knew that half the people here would be comfortable being on YouTube and the other half wouldn't be comfortable. And I wasn't gonna put them in a position where I was going to ask them to be on YouTube if I filmed it and to get the consent. I just, you know, some things are okay not being filmed. And so I didn't film it because I don't want people to feel, you know, if I ask them, hey, are you okay if I put that on YouTube with your face on it? And then them feel like they needed to say yes or them say no and then feel like they're disappointing me or anything like that. I just, some people don't wanna be on YouTube and that's okay. So I did not film that. It would have been fun because my mom was jumping up and down to see that. <laughs> but it's okay to just have some things where you're living in the moment and you're not filming it. Allison asks, how do you think baby will affect your channel, gardening, food prep, food preservation, and all of the above? I don't really know how it will affect all those things. I plan to continue producing just like I'm producing now when it comes to videos. I plan to cook the same. I plan to preserve all the same things. My garden is gonna get bigger next year. And so I'm not sure. I'm sure what it will mean is that maybe I need to get a little bit of help around here. I don't know what that looks like, but we'll just see what it comes. I, I don't know. Brandy asks, are you gonna take a couple months off once baby is born from posting? Are you gonna give a baby update once baby gets here? Or are you gonna get right back to it? So what my goal with this is going to be is I probably will have some pre-recorded videos that you all can enjoy once I have the baby, which will give me maybe a week or two buffer that we can enjoy just healing and bonding. And then Josh is planning to take three months off of his nine to five job. And so then I plan to get right back into my normal posting, I will, sh I have no problem sharing my experience from my perspective. So just because I'm not gonna be sharing baby doesn't mean that I won't share a birth vlog, postpartum vlogs, you know, how we're gonna be cooking and managing all the things around the home postpartum and all that stuff. I don't mind sharing all of that. I'm just not going to be sharing baby, pers you know, personal baby things. Uh, from baby's perspective, because those are two different things. I don't mind sharing my perspective from mom's perspective. So, you know, I probably will take a little bit of time, but you all will still be enjoying videos in some capacity one way or another, even if they're just us sitting down and talking through the birth or something, because these are fun to just sit down and relax and chat versus me doing a huge, you know, I'm not gonna be doing canning projects or something like that postpartum but we will be hanging out together postpartum and we'll be going over my experience. Ember asks, how do you feel the baby will affect the garden next year? Do you think you will have to postpone some projects? So right now the garden is in planning phase and I plan to have a very big garden next year. We actually meet with our landscaper on Wednesday and we're gonna go over the preliminary plans. This is where, you know, I might not be the one that is doing all the construction of building the garden, but we will get it done. If I, that means I have to hire some help in order for the garden to be put in, that will be the case. I mean, like the land works, building the raised beds, Josh and I plan to do the majority of that work. 
and I plan to start all my own seeds as much as possible or maybe I don't start all my own seeds maybe this next year I go to the nursery and I purchase starts whatever I don't know I do plan to have a garden I will make it happen if that means I have to you know maybe enlist a little bit more help from the landscaper to get the land works done a little bit faster or if it means that I purchase my starts from the nursery, then that's what it is. But we are gonna have a big garden this year and I'm excited about that. Are we gonna to get to all the plans? No, we're gonna do the yard work in phases, meaning you know, we're gonna have a really beautiful chicken coop, we are going to put in an orchard and a vineyard, we're gonna put in a ton of raised beds and a ton of fencing, we're gonna put in a greenhouse, but all of those things, even if it wasn't, even if baby wasn't coming this December, we, we can't do all those things in one year. We're gonna phase you know, these things out. And so baby probably will affect some of that, but we will for sure have a garden, <laughs> whatever, in whatever capacity that looks like. I'm not exactly sure right now, but I am excited for next year's garden. So that answered our questions. And I just wanna say that I hope that this video was helpful. The world, our culture, and our society, and even the people that are the closest to us, or the so-called experts, can have a lot to say. And those voices can be really, really loud. And for me, doing this for the first time, being someone who has not always dreamt and been excited about being pregnant, this thing is scary, and it's hard. And those voices are loud. And when I had my doula validate my feelings when I was being so honest and raw with her, about some of my fears and worries that for most people, it seems like those aren't fears or worries, that they're excited about some of those things. And she was just like, Becky, you need to do what's best for you mentally, physically, and emotionally because that means that you are then going to be the best parent for that child. And Josh was so supportive too. And even some of the things that I was sharing with her, I know were not the choices that she made for her family, but how just supportive she was, I hope that that can come across to you. So if you're new to this, and it's scary and you know you see people and you know even me who you see me doing all these things that I do have bad days and there's times that I just can't get up out of bed because I'm tired I'm sore I'm sick and that's okay <laughs> and it's okay to not be excited about all the nitty-grittiness of pregnancy labor and delivery and postpartum and so I hope that this was encouraging and you know it helps you just shut out some of the noise from um, like I said some of even the closest people to me and they have the best intentions but sometimes that sometimes you just need someone to see you and hear you and validate that it's okay to be scared or it's okay to choose something that might not be what everyone the experts say is the best option so anyway <laughs> i hope that this was encouraging to you so what we're going to do now is we are going to make some biscuits <laughs> and we're going to wash some eggs it's already five o'clock right now so josh will be home at some point <laughs> sometimes he works late sometimes he doesn't this is our soup i'm just going to put this right on the stove just let this heat up and we'll enjoy a yummy, cozy dinner tonight that I didn't have to do any work. Well, that's not true. We're going to be making biscuits. But I like making biscuits. And biscuits are fun and delicious. Especially because we have so much jam and things we can put on our biscuits. If you watched that last video where we made the soup together, I asked Josh what he wanted if he wanted chicken noodle soup with chicken and noodles, if he wanted chicken and dumplings, and he said he wanted chicken soup with biscuits. 
So I thought he didn't want the noodle part of the chicken noodle soup. He wanted biscuits as like the starch. Well, he wanted chicken noodle soup with biscuits on the side. <laughs> That's okay. I thought that was funny. We just had a little miscommunication there. So we have two cups of flour in here. Before we go much farther, I wanna get our buttermilk in quotes made. So I'm gonna put three fourths a cup of half and half in here. And then we're gonna to add to that to make our acidic mixture is one tablespoon of just white distilled vinegar. And we're gonna let that sit and kind of thicken up. And this is gonna react with the baking powder and baking soda that is going to give us our rise. So that's two teaspoons of baking soda, a baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna mix all that together. Now we're gonna take eight tablespoons of butter, which is one cup of butter. This is very cold butter. It doesn't have to be completely frozen, but you want it cold. And just to make our life a little bit easier, I'm gonna pre-slice it a little bit. Now we're gonna take a pastry knife and we're gonna cut our butter into our flour until it resembles breadcrumbs. We're actually gonna cut this butter into this flour mixture just a little bit more than you typically would. A lot of times you hear you want it to be cut in as pea size, but for this we're gonna cut it in until it looks like breadcrumbs, so a little bit smaller. So this is the texture we're looking for. That's perfect. All right, so what we're gonna do now is make a well in the center of our flour. And let me show you. You could absolutely use buttermilk for this recipe, but I never have fresh buttermilk on hand, so this is what I like to do. And you can kind of see how the vinegar thickened this up a little bit. We're gonna pour that right into the center of our bowl. And now we're just gonna mix this in. Biscuits are one of those things like pastry. Sometimes you need to adjust the liquid. Sometimes you don't. I'm just gonna get in there with my hands just a little bit. I do not want to overwork this, but I do want to make sure I get the flour mixed in. I'm gonna put some parchment down just because I don't feel like cleaning my counter. And I can see that I need a little bit more moisture, so I'm gonna take out the parts of the dough that are have enough moisture, and these dry bits, you see how that's kinda dry right there? I don't wanna keep adding a ton of moisture to this because this is moist enough, but I want to add some to this. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of half and half in here, and we're just gonna moisten that right here. Just like with pie pastry, when you're making biscuits, you wanna add as little moisture as possible so you can have a tender biscuit. So this is where this recipe gets a little bit interesting. We're gonna press it together. We're not gonna knead it, but we're just gonna take some time to get this dough into a cohesive mass, just like we do with our pie pastry. I probably could have cut the butter in a little bit smaller on this, but that's okay. Now what we're gonna do, this is where it gets a little bit unique. We're gonna roll out our biscuits. I'm gonna add just a titch of flour, not much at all. And I'm gonna fold it in thirds, like a letter. Put a little more flour down. And then I rotated it one way. Now we're gonna roll this together, and what we're doing is we're laminating this dough. Then we're gonna fold it in thirds again. Rotate it 90 degrees, and we're gonna roll it out one more time. Now I can't remember how many times I did that. I wanna do that a total of three times, and I think I did it twice, so I'm gonna do it one more time. 
fold it in thirds, turn it 90 degrees, and then roll it out again. To about a half an inch thickness, now you take your desired biscuit size. We're gonna cut out our biscuits. So hopefully, if we did this right, we're gonna have a bunch of beautiful layers to our biscuits. I think we will. Okay. Last time I made these biscuits, I put buttermilk on the top and I want to experiment with putting an egg wash and see if we can get a little bit better coloring on them. So I have one egg I'm going to mix up. We're just going to brush the tops of our biscuits. This could be a bad idea, but I want to experiment. This is all about what recipe testing is about is trying new things and seeing what works. Our biscuits are going in. I have the oven preheated to 425 degrees. So now what we're gonna do is get these beautiful eggs washed up. Look how pretty some of these eggs are. I just have normal chickens. They're not fancy laying chickens with fancy egg breeds or anything, but these two speckled eggs are just so beautiful. So these are washed up and these are gonna be given away because I still have plenty of eggs in my refrigerator. I think they're done. They're so pretty. Let's see. Oh yeah, look, just look at that. Do you see the flakiness on that? Ah, oh, beautiful. Just look at the flakiness of these biscuits and how easy was that? They've got a nice crusty bottom. I think the egg wash is the way to go. I mean, look at that beauty. Oh my goodness. Perfect. Okay, so this recipe will be linked down below if you want it. Well, friends, I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me as we just sat down and kind of relaxed and had a conversation that I hope was beneficial and encouraging to you. I love being in the kitchen. I love making yummy food. And I'm just grateful that you take time out of your day to spend time in my kitchen with me. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I can pop up a couple other videos you can go enjoy between now and my next upload. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend. Cheers.